Here we have Filter Shop's in-tank UV light system. Basically, it's exactly what the name says. It's a 55 watt Philips germicidal UV light that we, you actually place inside of your Jojo or Roto tank to control bacteria growth within the tank itself. What, um, what, what we have here is the system basically consists of two components. It's control box which sits on the outside of the tank and the actual lamp unit which is completely sealed and all you have is you've got a roll of cable that you bring bring to the outside of the tank and then into the control box and connect it up in, in there. Where you would use something like the submersible UV light is for rainwater or borehole water setups where you basically any time when you have water which is going to be stag stagnant and sitting in the, in, this, in the area for a while. Um, if you have very high bacteria levels in a, in a borehole it's a very nice pre-treatment step as well to bring those bacteria levels down to a level where you can actually deal with it with normal filtration. Um, another thing um, to keep in mind just with the UV systems is ideally you want to clean the water a little bit before it gets to the UV light as the cleaner the water is the further the light can shine within the tank and then the higher efficiency you actually get from the system. When you're actually installing the system basically what you want to do is you loosen the cable so you basically just have the two, two strands from the two ends of the bulbs together and um, then you, you take your bulb, open up the hatch in the tank, physically slide the, the bulb in and just make sure to keep a hold of the, the other end of the cable and then when you get, the, get to the other end of the cable now you need to decide two things. One, how far do you actually allow the bulb to go inside the tank and two, where do you actually take out the, the ends of the cable? Some people just take it under the hatch, um, but this does create an air gap um, at the top of the hatch. Ideally, you want to use one of the side ports on the tank. It's a bit of ambition to get, get, get to it, but slide, slide, slide them through the side port from the inside of the tank, and then you can just cover up the gaps, gaps on the side there with a bit of tape or something like silicone. Just remember that um, the, the bulb needs to be replaced after 9,000 hours, so install it in a way that it is not too difficult to remove again um, and then the, how far do you allow the bulb to actually sit in the tank um, the main thing with the bulb is you don't want your incoming water feed to land directly on the bulb so if you give it too much cord then it can um, can drift into where your incoming water feed uh, will spray directly on it if you give, give it too little cord then it'll just be sitting on the side of the tank so ideally you want to give it give it enough um, a cord inside the tank for it to reach the middle of the tank but not too much cord so it can um, go anywhere, anywhere further and closer to the inlet side of the tank. And that's basically all you need to do on the inside of the tank. The next step is the control box. The control box cover is just held on by these four screws. All you need is a flat screwdriver, unscrew them. Very, very simple and you just lift off the lid. Now, what you need to do next is take your wires coming from the lamp in the tank and uh, place the, take the nut and the grommet from the side, place the nut over, over the pipe, uh, over the uh, wire first and then place the, the grommet and then you slide it into the, the ends of the wire, wires coming out on the inside. The grommet is very tight on the wire to give a watertight seal so it is, it does require a little bit of force to get it over over the wire and then you can just tighten the nut um, at, on the end, end here again. Then on the inside you've got the ballast for the light plus then little um, quick screw connectors on here. What you want to take is a really tiny flat screwdriver and just loosen them until you can look into the end and see that the, the holes are open. So I wanted to actually still have a little bit of contact here on the thread but just out of the way so the holes are clear and then make sure at the, at the end of the ends of the wires here that you twist them a bit this just makes it easier to actually do the connections and it doesn't matter which way around uh, they go in the connector here it's both, both are the same you might need to bend the wire a little bit to get it into position and then you just slide 
them into the end and when they're in the end you just take the screwdriver again and tighten the screws and this will hold the wires in place and that's it now one side of the UV is, is connected you just repeat the same process for the other side and then each time you need to actually replace the bulb it's just the same procedure in reverse you just disconnect the, the wires here unscrew the, the nut at the, the side of the case and then take the wire out, take the grommet off put, the, put your new light in the tank and reconnect the new lights um, wires and just remember to put your cover on again nice and tightly and you're, you're good to go. The only other end, um, sorry, is uh, your power connection. You, we leave it as, a, as an open wire as many customers want to connect this either to uh, a level float or a pressure switch or um, other sources of power. Uh, if you just want the light to run permanently, which you would want to do in a fairly high bacteria environment, you could just connect a, connect a standard frequent plug on there and uh, connect that to leave it running permanently. If you have fairly low levels of bacteria and you just w want to avoid the water building up too much bacteria from standing, you can just connect it up to either a DB board timer or even a normal plug timer if you have a weatherproof area that you, that you can connect it to and then um, just set it to run for however many hours you need for your specific situation. If you want some advice for how long you, the light should be run in your specific situation, give us a call or send us an email. If you've got a water analysis, it should be fairly easy for us to give you a good indication of what would be the correct settings to use for your specific setup.